All right, Eugenia, we waited for you to give the first point. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the part about the updates. Um, yeah, sorry, I wasn't uh, working last week, so I didn't update my part. Um, don't know how they you did it, but I added uh, here three points, basically. Um, so my conclusion so far is that the only thing blocking other um, progress would be the fields that we need to add for inherited dates. Um, I see now that Alexander left a question about the next point, but the next point was um, the roll-up widgets. When watching the meeting from last week, I saw that it was decided to put on hold because we needed some UX decision. Um, but for what I seen, the, the columns we're using um, in the epics table, um, for the counts, it's just for caching them. So um, the reason I said this is not a blocker is because this um, this can be calculated and we still don't have a proposal to how we're gonna calculate these um, counts. So, and because this can be calculated if this data is lost, we're just gonna have to uh, get the counts from the database and save them in the new fields that are going to be empty for the legacy epics when they're migrated. But I don't know if that answers your question, Alexander. Yeah, so so my my understanding was that, that this, yeah, these are cached fields, but those are updated only basically on, on work item or on epic update, right? Um, they're not, not updated on, on epic view, so to say. Um, so, so what, what that leaves us with is like epics that did have this cached and updated, but are not being actively used. When we would migrate the data into the work item, it, it sounds like we would not migrate the cached values and the cached values would only be updated when the work item is updated. So, so basically you're left in a state where, um, you don't have that data when viewing, so to say, not not so active um, epics. Uh, so, so from that perspective, I feel like it will be nice to still translate them into the widget data, uh, whatever that that comes out to be. Um, probably Mario is better at answering this, but my uh, what I remember about these counts is that we we check the field in the database. And if there's nothing there, we calculate the count. So, because for example, one of the counts is not even being saved. That is the one about health status. So um, in that case, we just calculate with fetching the children, then doing the, the queries that are quite expensive. Um, but once we calculate them, we save them. But I think just calculating it the first time, if there's no data, it, it shouldn't be missing any data. But Maybe Mario can confirm. Point is, it's not a blocker, though, right? To to further progress. I don't think so, but in... yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it's a blocker. To, at least for the like for starting to to work on the workflow stream too, right? Like we can we can still sync fields from the Epic table into the issues table, and we can do backfilling of the Epic table fields into whatever we need to do them. Um, I feel I think the rollout rollup dates will still go into a separate table, right? So so we will kind of have to backfill them separately anyway. Um, it will not be in the same migration. So yeah, I, I think it's not a blocker. I was just like morally clarification question is like, can we really not backfill them? Like, don't we really need to? Can we really skip the backfill migration? Like generally or is it something that we will we can do as a as a follow-up step I, I will open a discussion for this in the, in the issue it is yeah I didn't consider it that way but we can see in the issue that Mario is working on um but yeah what you said about this being um a blocker the, the other table 
that's a question I, I added underneath. Basically, um, maybe this is was decided already, but I wasn't sure if we can start with um, this thinking work, um, even if we're missing some fields. So the only fields that are missing are uh, dates, and they're going to go into a different, uh, separate table. Um, so if that's the only thing blocking basically the the entire epic table to be able to be uh, migrated. Yeah, I think the workstream two part where where we are updating the code to to sync data can start anytime we know of a mapping of a field, right? So if we know that title from from epics table goes into title from issues table, we just update the code to to write to both places, um, and update to both places. So like any mapping that we know of already is like part of the workstream two and can go in there. We cannot start work stream three, because that will mean running multiple times the same basically migration for different fields. Um, and I think that's wasteful. Like you can do it, but it, but it's it's wasteful. So I think that's where the blocker would basically be. Let's clarify all the fields first and then run the migration once uh, instead of repeating it. Okay. So Felipe, maybe you could give an update there on work stream two. Has that already started? You made it. it. Sorry, um, not really. Uh, is uh, everything from Eugenia's update done? Um. Oh uh, yeah, I, I skipped the the one about API functionality. Um, right. this is more what I um extracted from the last meeting by um by um using a kind of proxy. Um, record keeping the legacy epic ID um, and the IID in a new field. Um, my assumption so far is that the um, all the endpoints for both APIs will keep working. But so far, what I've done is collected a list of all the um, endpoints related to epics, so we can verify once we have the code that's syncing both records. We can verify that everything's working, um, but for now it seems like there wouldn't be a problem with keep supporting the API. And that's my last point, I think. Um, John added something, I think. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify um, on your first point. Um, it sounds like we have all the backend fields we need um, for feature parity except for the one that you noted, which is due date. Um, uh, am I right in saying that we basically have full feature parity as far as the back end's concerned? Um, is that right? Yes, I, I would say so. The, the things are not working well, but this is not for lack of data or endpoints. It's more something things are not supported at the group level yet. So the, the work that's being done to um, make work items work at group level, all that that's unfinished for that is also affecting epics. But this oh. is not anything about um, data related to epic. Um, but there's so much missing, to be honest. Um, maybe I could calculate a percentage. <laughs> But yeah, uh, no, I'm no, still no. finding things that are missing and adding it to the list. I haven't finished that tracking, but my priority was to to check that all the data was complete. Um. So yeah. Sorry. Could you give an example? Um. Because I I can't think of in abstract yes. terms. I'm not capable. Um. Well, one example I added today uh, was that uh, um the um, notes are not rendering um. They're not working with um, Markdown in in a group level. Uh, the references don't work. So, for example, a system note that says you added this label, it will show um, the symbol of the label with the name, and you can click on it. Um, then, for example, if you put a reference in a comment and you try to preview the comment, that would trigger an error because the references can be triggered. 
that means that the quick actions don't work either. Um, other than that, um, is things to at the list level, so listing epics is not supported yet because listing work items at the group level mm-hmm. hasn't been finished. Um, and there's there's more, but uh, I'm including it in the issue um, tracking them. Okay, you know, great. I, that I was... wonder how we can track that because like we, they, that that does come to feature parity, obviously, like that that should work. But that's not a blocker for any of the work streams down down the work stream one, right? Yes. It's not something that will block work, work stream two or work streams three. It's just something that we need to fix in the code, basically. Um, so I wonder if we can can clearly track and separate that kind of work in the work stream one or like the feature parity that is not a blocker for the work stream two. So we'd need to think how we want to do that, but, but that's uh, one Yeah, of this, the- this could be extracted to another issue really. I, I expected to find more things blocking at the beginning. So that's why I did everything together. But yeah, that now that issue is also tracking everything like feature wise. Every time you you click and see an epic, do you have an equivalent view in work item where you list it, where you filter? It's maybe too much, and yeah, it, it might be out of scope. Um, so yeah, I can I can do that if if it's clear at the moment when you visit that issue at the top, it says what's blocking other. Um, and the only thing is uh, the dates, inherited dates, like I said. But that's a good idea that I might track this to somewhere else. Yeah, keeping them in the same epic is fine because, like, you keep it together. Like, like adding a label or or in the title, just having a, a predefined specification that this is something to be worked on, but is not a blocker. Or or the other way around, like specifying what's blocking the the work streams down down the line. Um, but yeah. It sounds like the important clarification, though, is that Workstream one or Workstream two is now fully unblocked, with the exception of due date, as mentioned. Um, these other issues, as they crop up, we should have a way to bring these to the working group because we can use all, we can use the extra capacity we have here. We have product managers on the call who can reprioritize things to move these things up, so we can use this working group to get those things done. Um, I'm not sure the best way to do that, to be honest. Like um, maybe just. Uh, Eugenia, if you if you just see something and want to bring it to the working group or even just bring it directly, like don't wait for a meeting, just go to somebody directly and get it scheduled. Um, that seems like the best way. Uh, I don't I don't mean to like scrutinize what you've done. In fact, like very well done. I'm delighted to hear that like there's been progress and that work screen work stream two is unblocked and we can crack on with that. Yeah, I I, I actually saw that the the fact that it doesn't block the other work stream doesn't mean that this doesn't block the migration in general. Because mm-hmm. if we don't have quick action working, if we find that after we did all the work of migrating the data, it's still still a problem. So I, I that was my idea of tracking the feature parity at every level, and not just data. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, and and also I'm gonna run out of updates to give once the uh, dates are finished. So I can what I can contribute to this meeting is um, the general feature parity and um, bring up issues to to schedule and stuff like that. Yeah, run a night of updates to give is a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. So um, yeah, cool. All right, uh, Donald. You've uh, just give a little update on that. Uh, Eugenia, I wasn't aware that you were tracking this, but just know that um, with, I mean, in the project management group, we've been working on the in on making the issue list uh, show epics and everything related to the detail view. So, yes, I mean, we've been working through this and we are tracking them elsewhere. So. I can and I can talk to you so we can link them. Uh, and yes, everything related to notes, uh, probably quick actions is something we are still missing. But that's yeah, something we we are going to fix. And and I yes, I as everyone said, it's not blocking the actual work streams of migrate migration. We'll try to get the views ready for for this to work correctly when when you migrate the data. Just that. okay, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, Eugenia, if you want to just transfer some of that type of stuff to the issue I linked in the agenda, 
Um, like Mario said, uh, we've been working on um, some of the some of the tweaks to get the group level, um, just the general group group level work item detail view and the list views working. But up until now, it's been primarily Mario and Kong that have been finding the issues. So there are for sure things that um, that we haven't uh, that we haven't looked at yet. Um, so yeah, if we can have all the stuff that you've discovered in a place and then or in a central place and then anyone else that is playing around inside of plan stage with creating epics and displaying epics um, that are work items report the things you find in that issue that i linked in the agenda okay um yes i i've been linking to some of the issues in, in project management so i i've been kind of uh, um looking a lot of your issues and adding some, some for the existing epics um but yeah i didn't want to uh, duplicate work this is more like the um the ways is uh describe in the description is from the epic point of view so everything you can do with an epic i try to list that and then um add a link to that feature to what's being worked or what's being scheduled was was uh, not going to be supported and um, so everything is from the epic point of view while i know that the work most of the work you're tracking is a um, work item general thing. So you're not mentioning epics and my side is more like um, where is the equivalent work that would um, give the parity to this feature. Um, but yeah, I've been linking mostly existing issues and Amanda helped a lot with that. She added most of the links there. Um, but yeah, I need to spend more time on this to complete more and add uh, probably some missing features. But um, this is a, the same I'm using for the updates. So uh, is the one link here on the top of the agenda. So you, you can look at it. Maybe you have a, a proposal of how to track this. But I thought that the work stream one could be the way to go and check what's missing epic wise, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely does. And uh, it's great to have it all in a central location. Um, it's kind of like a, uh, uh, a, a spec or we can use it as a spec for the um, um, I mean it could probably be, even be the we can use it to track the definition of done of this migration um, because that's the thing that we were uh, that we were we were kind of missing um, we know we want full feature parity but what what is that really mean i mean epics is so big and it's been around for so long that there were going to be things that we could have missed um so yeah it's definitely uh it's definitely great that we have a kind of central location um and then we can just like you said link off to where the work is taking place on some of that stuff and maybe maybe, maybe amanda can go through um if you have a chance amanda and prioritize some of those things so we can um, so we can know what really is a blocker and what's not. Uh, that might be that might be helpful. But other than that, no, I think it's it's great to have that uh, that central issue. Amanda, you had a hand up there. Did you want to come in? I answered my own question. Never mind. Okay, cool. We're happy to move on. Yes. Great. Thanks, Eugenia. Felipe? All right. Um, first, let's go for to decisions made. I'm repeating this one, the global ID one. I'm repeat, repeating from the last meeting uh, because there were some questions about how we could uh, batch insert issues and um, in the backfilling when this column is present at the epics table. So there's a thread there uh, where Adam also helped there explaining, giving some examples how this can, can be done. So I did update on the Epic. The ID field is now blue there. There's a link to the discussion uh, if you see the description of the Epic. Uh, 
So the internal ID it's also was discussed in the last sync. Uh, we decided to copy ID from work items to legacy epics. I also did update that field on the epic, so it's blue, should be ready to go, uh, ready to start syncing. And yeah. Next one is the decision decisions required. So all fields now uh, have a kind of definition, except the ones that are the ones that are blocked by your stream one. So if it's the description, there are like eight fields still blocked, uh, which are related to the start dates and fixed dates, that stuff of the dates we get. I'm not sure how it's going to be called. So given that, I was wondering if we are ready to start syncing fields, or, uh, throwing some code, and uh, maybe we should start with the most complicated one, which is IID, uh, because it will need we need to change the internal ID functionality to keep them in sync between legacy apps and work items, and also do a backfill. I have a feeling if we start with the, any other field, we will need to wipe the work items table multiple times. I mean, clean the epics, work items of epic type multiple times. So maybe we should start with the ID one. Uh, any thoughts on that? Makes sense to me. Um, is any of this work parallelizable? Like, um, we could put multiple people on it to, um, you know, kind of like reduce the amount of time it would take overall. Uh, yeah, the ID one should be uh, the ID and an ID one should be done first, um, maybe together because we need the reference reference from the issues table at the epics table otherwise you can start syncing anything because we won't have we want to know uh, how to relate both objects so yeah but once uh id and an id are done i think we can parallelize all the rest and there is another one which is, could be complicated uh it's parent id that we will require some additional work because we need to migrate this to other table and so maybe we should parallelize that one first. Yeah, I, I was also thinking maybe we can split up the work for create service and update service, right? Someone can pick up the create service and, and do the, the code of the mapping the fields between the um, epic and, and work item. And then someone can take up the update service and, and do that. And the other part is, yeah, these are the, the more complicated fields can also be a, a separate work stream. Like you don't have to, to do it yourself, but like can, can be just a separate issue, like the parent ID or whatever comes up to be a bit more complicated, a bit more code. Because like it doesn't make sense to, to, for instance, to split it field by field and parallelize it that way because it has like too much overhead, in my opinion. It's the same way of, of syncing title and description, right? It can be done by one person. Um, but then for, for more complicated fields, um, if we can break it down into clear issues and, and then have people pick them up, that, that will be a, a way to parallelize it. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I should start writing issues for these, but I think the most complicated ones are IID and parent ID. All the other ones which are blue should be like you said, title and description. So yeah, we can parallelize that way. Yeah, so that, the question is, go, sorry, go on. Yeah, that, that kind of segues a bit to my um, decision to be taken with the IID thing. We need to sync up and see how we, we need to um, order the steps that needs to be taken in order to, to implement the code. I don't think that we can introduce the code right away. I mean, we may be able to, but there are some edge cases that may result in some in some issues. So um, we may need to run the cleanup migration first, but at the same time, we would want to disable the ability to create work items at the group level for a short period of time until we, we get the new code into production, basically. Um, again, I'm not, I, I don't have any assumption. I don't know if any self-managed customers would have enabled the feature flag and tried it out and things like that. 
Um, how can we securely say that that we can enable the code? Do we need to split it between releases? So there is some some discussion and thinking to be done on that side to see how can we um, like add that code snippet on the Epix table that will now sync up the IADs with issues. But we can take it offline and and discuss and and, and make a decision on that. All right, all right, makes sense. Uh... For yeah, the my assumption about sorry, go on. Sorry, for the breakdown into work streams that we discussed just there a second ago. Um, can somebody volunteer to take that, Felipe? Maybe it makes sense for you to do it just to figure out like which fields should be done by one person and which fields can be grouped together and done by one person. Yeah, I can do it. Thanks. Um uh, all right. Um uh, next topic then. Uh on that on this epic, if you check the description, there are two kinds of there are two readers. There are the basic columns, which are columns that are present at the epic table. I'm calling them the basic. And there are associations, which are references from references from other tables to epics. And I was wondering if you could split this work stream epic in some kind of work stream two dot five one to handle only associations and the other one to handle the current one to handle only the basic fields. Yeah, I think we can split it in whatever smaller things that we can we, we want. And I I don't know how much of these associations are blocked by the original thinking, right? I guess there is a part of of blah. Yeah, I, I don't know because you want the you want the ID from the issues table in, in, in many of these associations, right? So it it is kind of blocked. Um, yeah, I think un until we have the issue ID column apps table, I think every association is blocked for now. Yeah, uh, th that's it from my side. Um, anyone has any questions? Otherwise, we can go to Alexandru. Uh, just, just one additional question. I can see in the two epics that we've discussed, the Workstream 1 and Workstream 2, that there are um, features that are not, they're marked as not supported. Uh, they have the red X. Um, some of them make sense, like... Uh, like, why, like why would you sync description HTML when you can generate it from description? Uh, there's a signee ID, which isn't used on epics, but for color, for example, that's one that I would expect, like probably would be synced from epics to work items. So why has that one got an X next to it? Uh, I remember, I think Amanda product said, we are not going to support column for work item epics. Uh, I remember this was this in a previous discussion, maybe product can talk about this. Yeah, again. we we need to support it in the future. It's currently feature flag. It hasn't been rolled out from feature flag. So it's not considered parity. So we will support it in the future, but it's not required now. Good explanation. Oh Thank you. Sounds reasonable. Uh, and we don't have a caller on the issues table. So like on the on the work items, we, we don't like, do we need to add it then? Or where are we saying? That is something to be decided after the migration. We plan to support it. So if that's helpful, so we would need it in the future. I think at some point somebody said they would prefer to, maybe Kashal said they would prefer to add it now, but I can't remember the reason. Well, yeah. the thing is like, if it's not GA now, then we don't really have to copy over people's existing colors. Like if we would build this feature during say Workstream 3, you know, while that's going on, like, I guess it's fine, right? Yeah, that, that's that's my question. If we don't have it, GA, like, I'm not sure, is the is behind feature flag, but feature flag is not enabled, where is it? Um, so like, do we break any user experience if we don't copy the colors? Is that- Well, my... that's, yeah, that's a great question because it is available in production, but I'm not sure if it's just available for GitLab or if it's available for all SaaS. If somebody could check that. 
Yeah, I'm checking it now. Um, Thank you. I'll leave the answer because in the doc. If it is available for all SAS, to your point, Alexandra, we don't want to break existing workflows. We can I also think check in the database and see if, I'm sorry, uh, we can also if check in, in the database and see if, if there is any actual usage. Maybe, maybe it's not really used. If the name of the feature flag is Epic Color Highlight, um, that's disabled by default. I can check the MR that's linked to it. Yeah, that's the question. Is it Epic Color Highlight? I guess. <laughs> Implement color attribute for Epic. Yeah, that's that's the MR that was added in 49. Uh, and I remember uh, maybe at the beginning of the year uh, that someone tried to turn it on, but it wasn't ready. So they they went back, I think. Uh, there but was a lot of least... UX discussions with these. Yeah. Because you can't really update the color. I mean, I just checked and the, the flag is enabled globally in production. So I'm not sure if that's... Yes, uh... it is. Yeah, it's enabled. I think you can see the color. But it's no, it's not going to be enabled by default. Not for self-hosted, but uh, mm. users might have been using it in dot com. Yeah, right. but the ben the benchmark for general availability is enabled by default, right? Mm. <laughs> Who's got access to the uh, phone we... right now? How many colors? Can we track usage? Are... Yeah. Yeah, I think I think usage is the key here. If this is like less than one percent of the population using it, I think that's our call, or some. I think there was a problem as well that they added. Um, there was a migration to add a color by default, so all epics were blue by default. Um, I don't know if that was reverted because I remember um, there was some feedback saying that it didn't look good. Um, or it was too like it they wasn't are. easy to read it in I think it was uh, boards so if if it has a default value all of the epics will have blue at the moment but we don't mm -hmm. know if they're using it or not uh, it does have like, a it has default value I see in uh -huh. the database so we can't use this uh, we can't count these records to take a decision you can. I mean, we can check if, if there are any changes, anything different. From yeah, that. can you yeah. count how many are not blue? Yeah. I've definitely seen it. I've seen it used in customer calls or something, for sure. Okay, so, so what is the effort to include it? We need a new color widget on yes, work items. Yes, we don't have it yet. Okay. Okay. So we have 27,000 epics that do have a color different from the default one. And the total number is around, uh, let me see, 390, 400,000. So it's what, like 5% or is it something like that? Not five. I don't know. My math. Between, between five and seven. I think you're pretty close. <laughs> close enough. Um, yeah. Like, okay. I don't think we should block on it, though. I mean, how hard would it be, I suppose, mm. to... Like, we shouldn't block Workstream 2 on this, in my opinion. Just press on with Workstream 2 now, and then see if we can maybe put the back end in for it while Workstream 2 is going on. What do you think? I can yeah, create an issue for, to track this, and yeah, maybe we can do it in next milestone if we have the capacity. Yeah, that would be ideal. Please, thank you. Would that be an added column to the issues table or a separate table? Probably separate. Separate, widgets separate widgets. table is better. Okay. Cool. I agree. Okay, so I think I will mark that field as a question mark again. Uh, <laughs> We can decide later. Uh, that's it for my update. So if Alexander wants to move forward. Yeah, so then that moves it also back to the workstream one, right into the into the parity things is like we need to pick up that that color thing as a parity feature to be to be added. 
Um, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But but we're but we just said that Workstream Two is going to have to start with IDs and stuff anyway. So like, there's no reason to block on it. Right. Uh, yeah, I was just anyway. Yeah, we we can start with the IDs and we can sync up later on. See how much work there is for writing the color. Um, so on the backfilling side, we we can do the backfilling of the internal ideas once we decide how we want to do that like based on on this edge cases we, we do we want to introduce code first is there any background like uh, yeah any migration that needs to clean up data first so so we need to decide on that so so yeah we can and on the backfilling side we can start with the internal ideas backfilling um as soon as as we kind of figure out the the iids sync um, between Workstream 2 and, and Workstream 3 kind of work. And once we, we do that, that kind of unblocks any need of adding, like any, like we no longer need to block creation of the um, work items at the group level, except for the work items that are of type epic. Um, because we cannot allow creation of the epics at the of the work item epic at the group level because we don't have the the bidirectional sync, um, so so we need to keep it only flowing from the from the legacy side uh, into the into the work items and not the other way around. Um, there are probably some other edge cases like converting an work item to an epic or converting from an epic to a different work item that should be not allowed as well. We, we need to, I don't know, throwing an arrow should be good enough, just not, not allowing to have the data um, getting out of sync, which will be the, the bigger challenge afterwards. Yeah, I think we should, we, we need some kind of constraint uh, at database level between both uh, IIDs, just to make sure we don't have duplicates and, and you know maybe try to do this in a more safe way. So I think the IADs are fine. Like we cannot have database level constraints because it's be between two tables and multiple fields. I don't think Postgres supports multiple fields, foreign keys kind of thing. Um which would be one way to to do it, right? Uh, you, you'd have IID and work item type ID being foreign keyed to the epics table somehow, uh, but I don't think that's that's possible. I don't know. We'll 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 need to sync up with the with the database team and see if if there is anything we can do on that side. But yeah, yeah, maybe a unique index plus foreign key also solves the problem. But yeah, we can we can talk later about this. On your last point there, is there still a decision required there? Yeah, that's, that's the part that I, I said earlier that we'll need to sync up with the with the work stream two into deciding what is the order of of introducing the the IAD syncing into into internal IDs table. Do we clean it up first? Do we clean up the um, work items at the group level first? Can we disable creation of the work items for the for a given period of time, even on .com and 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 everywhere else, and and so on? So like, how can we how can we check that self managed customers didn't introduce any new um, work items at the group level before we we introduce the code, like before the next release and things like that? So there is there is some thinking to be done and and understanding on how we can prevent this stuff. It's it's an edge case and a minority of cases, but but it can still theoretically happen. You mean group it's, level work items specifically, right? Can we? Yeah, group it? group level work items. Like yeah, that that's that's important for the IID syncing of the epics because we will now look up the IIDs of epics based on the issues table, basically. Yeah, no, um, I get it. Yeah. Um. So can we resolve that decision now? Because to my mind, it sh there should be no problem. I thought we resolved this already, to be honest, that there should be no problem deleting group level work items. It's not only about deletion. Like, even if we deleted um, 
So, so the deletion needs to go in first before we introduce the code itself, right? Uh, now that means that deletion should be a ordinary migration, but this is a data migration. I'm not sure that the database team is okay with running a data migration as an ordinary migration because that can take a while. So that slows down the entire upgrade process of the self-managed, for instance, right? right it's um, an empty migration yeah. in the best case. It's not an empty migration. But there shouldn't be any work item at the group level. Oh, we cannot guarantee that, right? If, if some customer enabled it and created a bunch of them through, in, through a script or somehow, like there is no way to know that like that's, that's the best case scenario and that's a very probable scenario, but there is also outliers there. Um, we can introduce a migration that will just break your upgrade, the self-managed upgrade and say, well, you cannot upgrade because you have work items at the group level, go and manually delete those items. I'm not sure that's a great experience and that's what we want to do. Right. And I don't think we've done that before. Uh, so, so there are these kind of things that we need to, we need to synchronize on how we want to proceed. But would it break it? I mean, even if they have thousands of them, because I don't know, they were trying out stuff, the the regular migration would still run. It would just delay their upgrade process a little bit. It will not break it. So that should be fine. It, it depends on the number, like how many. Like you say a thousand, what if, if, what if there are more? I, I mean, realistically, it's probably none, but... <laughs> Like you never know. With, with, with the, I mean, like, I've learned that with the customers, you, you never know what you'll you'll find. Yeah, but what it means that it fail. I mean, we will do it in batches, probably just for safety, so we won't have uh, queries timing out. The migration might just take a little longer if they have many, right? So, so we need to keep in mind that there is a timeout for the whole upgrade process as well. I think it's an hour or something like that. So if you have a migration that runs half an hour, um, like you've, you've, you've got only half an hour left for the whole upgrade process that will fail uh, after the time, timeout or things like that. Okay. So, so like one other option is to, to delete these in one release and then introduce code in the next release. But in between releases, you need to disable the ability of the API to actually create work items or do something about that, right? Um, even hard code an exception and, and not allow it to 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 do uh, things like that and, and and stuff like that. So that's that's like what I was trying to say when 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 saying about syncing. Could we start with that actually? Raise the exception when a work item gets created. Um, only customers that use the code directly will get that. Then perform the deletion in background migrations, and then we still like take probably two three milestones. So we do the syncing, so we should be fine. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm all, because it's not a GA feature and if a customer has enabled it and, and ran the API, right, and created, from my perspective, it's totally okay to raise an exception within the, within the migration itself and say, you cannot proceed with the upgrade of, to this version because you, 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 you have work items at the group level, we've detected that you do have, and then you go ahead and manually delete them, and then you can proceed with your upgrade. I'm not sure if that that breaks anything in the meantime. Like, are you now in a state where you cannot roll back and cannot upgrade, and and like you cannot connect to your database? I, I have no idea how customers exactly do that on self managed. So I don't want to create more problems than than we have to. But the, the principle is good, right? It's sound. I think what Nicholas was saying was disable the ability to create group level work items, then clean out that table using a proper, you know, um, data migration that's safe. And then we get like as long as you need to do the backfill properly. And then we can, when everything's safe again, look at switching group level creation back on. The reason why I think that's interesting as well is that like we could start enabling the viewing of epics as work items internally for us to check it out check the ux looks good that everything seems to be working correctly but without the risk that people create work items at the group level and interrupt the iid sequential iid 
yeah, we we can do that. Like change the code to raise an exception and and move the migrations to the to the post migrate, right? And then the code gets updated and the migrations do run afterwards. Um, so yeah, I I think that that can work. So can Just you get started on that, Dennis? What's yeah, your... I, I think so. Okay, cool. Thanks. Will Sorry, Will syncing be in at that point um, so that people can still create? group level work items technically, but it would be through the legacy creation process. Yeah, we will basically only disable the I, I like we should only raise an exception on the work item APIs for the epic type, not not anything else, right? Or like for the group level actually work items. Sorry, I'm 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 Getting up here. So, like, raise an exception only for for work items API at the group level. Everything else should just work as as is. If it goes through legacy Apex API, it should not have any influence and and so on. Does that answer your question, Donald? Or yes, or... yeah, it does. Um, should we go ahead and do that now? Yeah, like that's. Doing... I think that's the first step that we need to take before, uh, well, that and 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 changing the epic model to sync up into the internal IDs is the first step um, to do. Well, that can be done at the same time as the backfilling of the internal IDs, Amar. So you can go all can go into one release basically. Okay. Thanks, Alex. I've yeah, added you as the DRI for that, if you wouldn't yeah. mind just yeah, yeah. Um, giving us an update next week on progress on it. Sorry, did I talk over somebody again? No, it was me. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I was going to say that this is uh, also blocking work screen too somehow, unless we want to wipe the table multiple times. So maybe this is a place to start. Does it block work stream too, though? Because won't won't syncing just override any changes? But but if we start doing work stream two, we can start doing work stream two now. But if we don't do this uh, before, we need to wipe the table, uh, the, the work item epics multiple times. Maybe depends of the order things are done because ID will be out of sync. The IDs will have a different value in issue table in another one in X table. Okay, that makes it a bit more critical then. So I think Felipe, the, the actual code to to do the IID sync is going to be pretty complex anyway, right? So you're not blocked on getting started on that. But yeah, I understand it'll have to be sequentially uh, merged. So yeah, okay, cool. Thanks. Felipe, just one question. I mean, yeah, right now we probably have conflicts on IIDs, but this is all test data, so maybe the syncing mechanism can just, I don't know, if it finds a conflict, uh, it just overwrites the data on the work items table. Yeah, but that's, uh, I mean, that's additional code. Maybe. That's additional code and ifs and cases and scenarios that you need to take care of. Whereas if you really wipe I mean, it up and, and sync it up into internal IDs, you don't really need to do that. No, but I'm saying that we just assume that the IIDs are in sync um, and if I find one in the issues table with the same ID as the Epic, I just, I don't know, update it because later we will backfill anyway, right? We will wipe and backfill. So during this time, we can be updating the wrong issue record uh, and it doesn't matter. I mean, we don't need, even need to check if it's the right one. I mean, there's no way to check if it's the right one, but we simply start syncing information, I mean, that's the first step. Yeah, Just I was, I was saying that we maybe can, I was saying that maybe we can avoid that, like instead of find or create issue um, with this properties, mm -hmm. you, you can just oh. do create, yeah, I don't know, maybe. maybe that's okay as well. Oh yeah, so you're it's saying don't you always find it, I mean, I assume they are all already there in the issues table versus creating one if it doesn't exist. Yeah, that makes sense. If, yeah. Yeah, I, I think as long as we merge it in the right order, we can just do one migration to wipe. But if we find out that it's 
we need we can parallelize more maybe you can just do like you said and whatever we will clean it up anyway later so yeah Oh, yeah, thanks, Donald. We are actually well over at this point. So thanks, everyone, for your stick in power. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just press on real quick to mine because mine's way less technical a topic. Um, but Alexander, you asked this question during the week, and I think it's a valid one for anyone coming in to this project cold. Um, like, is it reasonable that everybody... agrees that think... this is the path oh, focused no. on but then no. sorry as... john we lost you there it was very suspenseful is it reasonable is what happened <laughs> what, what a up. yeah oh he's frozen again yeah yeah it looks like he's frozen <laughs> uh, am i back oh i'll have to connect this is great Damn. <laughs> You're back. Am I back? No. God damn it. Yes. You're moving again. <laughs> Looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Do you know what's this has been happening all day? And I don't know what it is, but like I can hear you, but for some reason I'm frozen. It's like some weird Disney film where I'm talking, but nobody can hear me, but I can hear all of you. Like, anyway, um, I'm going to switch networks. Um, but yeah, well, look, you can read this yourselves. To be honest, I don't want to take any more of your time and embarrass myself by getting frozen again. So yeah, let me know if um, you disagree that this is the pathway that we're actually taking. I just want to make sure that we're agreed on the most broad um, points. And then don't go all quiet, like as if uh, I'm frozen again and you can't hear me. <laughs> we heard you. Maybe this time, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the the important and unclear part for me there was like once the the data is synced in all the tables and all that stuff, we can still not interact with the work item of type epic until we change the, the legacy code that much that, that only IID or ID remains in that table. And then we need to do a little bit of back syncing, very little work required there. And only after that can we uh, interact with the Epic as an work item or from the work item UI, if you will, or APIs and, and things like that. Yeah. So like I was talking to Donald about this, I think last week, and I'm wondering, would it be helpful to visually represent it somewhere in a kind of mermaid diagram or something like that? Maybe not. Okay, cool. I have a question, but I don't see it mentioned it there. Um, so when we create a, a work item epic, are we going to create a legacy epic record for it? So are we always going to have this pair of records attached to each other uh, to make the API work? We, we are going yeah, we to always have the pair. Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry, go on, Alex. I, I just said we need this at least for a while to support the APIs into the application. Maybe we can drop it later. OK. Yeah, so the, the thing is that we will always have to have the pair, but we will not be creating the work item epic and then creating the legacy. It will be the other way around always. Just create the legacy epic and create a corresponding work item in the services or whatever. So, so the, the interaction through the work items API should never create an epic, right? So like when you create an work item through the APIs, it can create any other type of work item, but not an epic because we don't have the backward syncing mechanism into the legacy epics table. Does that make sense? Until the very end. Until the, the very end when we've and... slimmed down the epic yeah, model to the to just ID basically. 
Yeah, but eventually it would be there. Because I'm thinking of a situation where you have a, a work item and you want to create and add a child, for example, and then you want to create an epic. Um, so you have an epic, you want to add a child epic, and you have the option to create it already. So that in, I thought that we would create a work item epic and a legacy epic uh, record to attach the ID to it. I, I thought that, that it would be both ways. Regardless of what you create, you always create the other record. So yeah, I don't know how we solve it, but I guess from the UI, you'll have to call the legacy API instead of calling the work item API for the epic specifically. So that again, it just goes through through that side of the cycle and not the not the other side. So the okay, this would be a lot of the um, yeah, the, the front end things that I, I was thinking I, I hadn't considered in the feature parity. This would be one of the things we we're, we're gonna have to start tracking. So it probably going to ping front-end engineers in the tracking issue for parity because I might be missing a lot of stuff that front-end would need different. Or, or, the other way, or the other way is like in the work item API, detect that you want to create a epic work item and then call the respective legacy services, right? So instead of calling the work item services, call the epic services to create, again, to just go that route, because like we will add the code that does the syncing at the legacy, at the Epic side, uh, and not at the work item side. Yeah, but that would use a different endpoint and not a different service, because we can't put an Epic service inside the work item endpoint, because the work item end endpoint is, is quite particular, use widgets. So we couldn't just put a, an epic service there if they're trying to create an epic type. I mean, we can, but we will need to do the mapping of the of the um, attributes or parameters yes, into the so that the legacy service understands. So there, there is two ways to do it: either call mm -hmm. the 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 old API or call the or kind of API, but 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 have the logic within the um, API endpoint so that it can redirect to the old service. This is only for okay. creation, right? And update. An update, yeah. I thought because the the legacy record is going to be skinny, so it only have a, an ID. So we create the work item, and somewhere there, we just create uh, an epic with that same ID. Yes, and that's that will it, come, and we just leave. That will come later on, right? Like there is still work to be done to get the legacy epic skinny. Um, that will, oh, not, I, I, over, that will not happen like tomorrow or once the, the data is migrated, that will not happen right away. We still need to um, to change at least the model so that it doesn't look up the fields in the Epix table, but delegates to the corresponding work item, for instance, and, and things like that. There is still a small window where, where, where we will have that. Okay, but, so but that is the goal done, at the end. Yeah, this will be done yeah. before the migration. Right, like before, we're we're saying okay, epics are uh, in GA as work items. Be this before we allow be people to create the work item epic, I guess. Yeah, be before before we allow interaction with epics for for the users, but not the. I don't know what we mean before the migration, because like for me, migration is this data migration that we want to do, uh, and I think you're calling migration when people migrate to this. Epics are like we we need to, yeah. Both okay. So to, before Q uh, Q before the end of Q one, I don't know about that either. <laughs> before <laughs> April, I don't know what before the end of Q one means. Before April is that Q one or Q two? <laughs> Q one, right? Before people are using Epics as work items. Yeah, that that makes more sense. Okay, so then on the front end, uh, we do not have to. Uh, um, uh, add an option to use the legacy APIs with the updated work item views. Yeah, as long as you cannot view an work item, uh, an epic work item, I think I think we're okay because, like, then you don't have the option to create or add children or update or all that stuff. As long as you only can view the legacy epics. 
in, in the, their legacy views, we, we should be okay. <laughs> so, so like th this is why I was asking this, because my understanding is we will be using the legacy views of the epics up until the moment when the epic model becomes skinny, as in just contains the ID pairs between epic and issue. So everything will go through DAO's views and, 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 and all that stuff. Um, up until that moment, we will keep delegating and delegating and delegating and until we've got the legacy epic very, very slim. And then there is just a little bit of code to be added to sync back. And that's when we can enable the epics on on, uh, on work item side. All right, we're over, way over. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Great progress. Uh, I'll see you next week. Um, see ya.